Okay, we're going to have a look at some pedestrian crossings. The first one that we're going to deal with is a zebra crossing. You can recognise a zebra crossing um, by the black and white stripes on the road and the, uh, the beacons at the side, they're also black and white. Um, and this pedestrian crossing, quite simply, if anyone wishes to use the crossing or if anyone is on the crossing or sets foot on it, we're going to give way to them. So, we see the crossing on the approach and we use a mirror signal manoeuvre routine. We check the mirrors to see who's behind and see how close they are and that will give us an idea of what we do as we're coming up to the crossing. A signal if required may very well be brake lights. It could even be a slowing down arm signal. And then the manoeuvre is the stop. And as you can see with this crossing there's a pedestrian waiting at the side so we're going to give way and we're going to stop before the first give way line. We secure our car, you'll put the handbrake on, you'll select neutral and, and stay nice and still and quiet. Just with the lines for a second, this one here to the left hand side means no parking. It would be dangerous to park um, because you would be forcing other people to overtake and that may obstruct their view of people crossing the road. And the same sort of thing goes with this line in the middle. This line in the middle means no overtaking. It's dangerous to overtake the lead vehicle for the same reason. If you overtake, you might not see a pedestrian that's crossing the road. So never overtake on a pedestrian crossing. What we'll do is here at the crossing, we'll sit nice and still. We're not going to beckon the pedestrian. All we're going to do is just sit nice and still and let the pedestrian choose when they want to cross the road. Uh, so they cross the road. When they've crossed, if it's still safe and there's no one else that's going to cross, we can check our mirrors and we can proceed. Now, if there is a central island, everything else still works in the same way. Mirror signal manoeuvre. Our speed is always ready to be able to stop if we need to. But what we do with an island in the middle we treat this as two separate crossings. So we do everything the same on the approach, but when the pedestrian has reached the middle and we're 100% certain they're not going to walk back or run back, we can proceed. Now, that's the zebra crossings. We're now going to have a look at the pelican crossings. The pelican crossings are controlled by traffic lights. We can recognise them. Uh, by the boxes. You can see the box in the middle of the picture here. Um, when you press this button the word wait illuminates and if we have a look at the actual traffic light itself on the side of the traffic light, not where the green one's showing, but at the side there are two cowls showing the red and green men and that denotes that it's a pelican crossing. Now on the approach we do exactly the same thing. We see the crossing and we're scanning around and we're seeing who's going to use it and we're adjusting our speed accordingly. We'll use a mirror signal manoeuvre routine, but if you look at the traffic lights a second, the traffic light, the amber one, the steady one, means if you can stop safely, we're going to stop. So that's what we're going to do in this situation. Red means you must stop. So again, we're going to come up to the line in the same way. We'll stop, we'll secure our car and just keep nice and still and quiet. All the other lines mean exactly the same. Now, after a while, usually around about 8 to 10 seconds, the traffic lights go from red to flashing amber. Now, what flashing amber means is give way to people on the crossing. So, the blue car's doing the correct thing, waiting for this pedestrian to clear and make sure they're not going to run back before it continues. When you're happy that the pedestrian's clear, not going to come back, if there's no one else, you can proceed. Then after a while, the lights will change to green, which means go if the crossing's clear. Now, a little extra thing here. If there's an island on these type of crossings, the Pelican crossings, it's still classed as one crossing. However, if it was staggered, and there's an area in the middle where you have to walk to a different crossing, that's classed as two separate crossings. The one on the left might be on red, the one on the right may very well be on green still. Okay. The next crossing, a puffin crossing, is still traffic light controlled, but it looks a little different. As you can see by the picture, there are no cowls. These crossings have sensors, which sense when the pedestrians are actually on the crossing. The boxes themselves look a little 
bit different as well. The red and the green men are on the boxes. And when you press the button, the word wait doesn't illuminate. Usually a red light illuminates on the box. So we know how to recognize these buffing crossings. Everything else on the approach is exactly the same. Mirror signal maneuver, the light sequences are the same, the lines mean the same, and we stop at the line in the same way. However, because of the sensors, these sensors pick up when the pedestrian has actually reached the other side of the crossing. So there's no need for a flashing amber phase to let pedestrians finish. So when the pedestrian has got to the other side and cleared, the sensors pick up on that and then change the traffic lights. Red and amber means get ready. And then green means go if it's clear. There are a couple of other crossings. If you look at the one at the top, the Toucan Crossing, it works in the same way that the Puffin Crossing does with the sensors and the same light sequences, but cyclists and pedestrians can use these type of crossings. Be aware of these because cyclists don't have to dismount. They could be riding across the road in front of you. The bottom one, the Pegasus or Equestrian Crossing, again works in the same way with the sensors and the light sequences, but horse riders use this one also, and again, they don't have to dismount. Their buttons that they press might very well be high up. Have you got any questions? All these briefings are used on the iPad with apps produced by a guy called Neil Beaver. I use these apps on a daily basis. They're quite simply the best on the market. I'm not being paid to say this about these apps. I would turn around and recommend these apps to anyone learning to be a driving instructor.